2nd Samuel chapter 13. And I want to read one verse, that verse being verse 10. Here beginneth the reading of God's holy word. And Amnon said unto Tamar, Bring the meat into the chamber that I may eat of thine hand. And Tamar took the cakes which she had made and brought them into the chamber to Amnon, her brother. The word of the Lord for the people of God, you can take your seat. So we are on the year theme, Kingdom Defenders. And we're on the series, The Life and Legacy of David. And today we want to minister from the sermon topic, Open Shame, the Taking. Open Shame, the Taking. Seeds planted will bloom. What is within the skin, coat, or tester of the seed will yield in its season. While in nature there are specific planting seasons and specific reaping seasons for that which is planted, in the kingdom there is no exact timing or pattern for the sowing and the reaping. In the kingdom, you can plant a certain seed and think that Given there has been no backlash or consequences the next week, the next month, or the next year, that all is well. Yet the truth is that sometimes the timing of God when it comes to reaping can cover decades. It is not God's desire to punish you. No, it is that you planted a certain behavior, and now that behavior will be yielded back to you in your life in some way. Hmm. See, God knows every seed, you know. I don't see the seed. He knows the seed. We often, as a society, plant seeds and then are in shock as they spring forth. Let, let me stop it here. Let me stop here a moment. Wait, wait. I was sent a video first thing this morning. Well, it's on Facebook now. <laughs> I said, the police need help. The police need help to save the police. Let me give them a little strategy. Can I give them a little strategy? Can I give them a little strategy? You got the two that are fighting, right? Please come down the hill. Leave them. Let them keep fighting. Arrest a couple of them around. Not arrest. Cuff them. Because the police trying to stop the fighters, and I, try, I got to fight off the crowd. So cuff a cup, cuff them. Uh, uh, they're, back, uh, they're coughing. See, uh, okay, you don't want my advice. Then you go and deal with the 19-year-old and the 26-year-old. Did I say 19 and 26? But well, we sowed some seeds, you see. Now we can't handle the backlash. Yeesh. Let me, let, me, let me share a few, a few seeds here. We plant a seed of watching a toddler do wrong, and we call it cute. Then as that toddler goes to school and does wrong, we want to know what happened. Well, you planted the wrong is cute seed. We celebrate to the max. Hear me now. We celebrate to the max when single young women have babies. And then we criticize them in a few years when they can't afford rent or to pay bills because they have no husband or father to be their help. Well, you planted the have a baby right now. See? <laughs> we celebrate the liberty to smoke weed. But then we will complain about the young black man not working. Well, you planted the Liberty to smoke weed seed. See? Church, this is why it cannot be let yourself go or give an inch because before you know it, they've gone a mile. All seeds need is time and nature. Nature will take care of the rest. Over time, that seed will spring forth. Genesis 8, 22, it says, While the earth remaineth seed, time, and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. Luke 6, 38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give into your bosom. 
For with the same measure that ye meet withal, it shall be measured to you again. It's seeding. Mark 4, 26 and 27, it says, And he said, So is the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, as if a man should cast seed into the ground, and it should sleep and rise night and day, and the seed should spring forth and grow up. He knew it, not how. How did that happen? How, that's our people. That happened in Bermuda. You don't know how it happened? Galatians 6 and 7, be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Today we will return to David to see the seed reaping consequence. You see the seed reaping. It's happening because of what he had previously planted. As we deal with the following three points. Point number one. Number one. The target. Point number one, the target. Point number two, the taking. Point number two, the taking. And point number three, the torture. Point number three. I got some tortured souls in Bermuda. Don't think for a moment that Pastor Seaman thinks they're fighting and doing all sorts of things because that's who they are, and they take joy. Mm -mm 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 -mm. They're, they're tortured. They're, they're going through something, and they never found out that Jesus is the answer. Let me go to point number one, the target. Verse number one, and it came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister whose name was Tamar. And Amnon, the son of David, loved her. The target, her name is Tamar. Tamar means palm tree. Lord have mercy. Come on up in here. Oh, can we talk about yesterday cutting down palm trees? Can we talk about that? Can, can, can you say that? What about them? Strong. They're strong, in it? Mm -hmm. they, they grow tall. They go deep. It's hard. It takes time to deal with them. She is, that's her given name, palm tree. That's what God spoke when, when the seed was conceived and she was in her mother's womb and she came forth. She, she was called a palm tree. That means that mama and daddy, when they first held her in their arms, they said, oh, she a palm tree. Uh, she going to come forth. I can see there's greatness about her. Oh, there's longevity. Oh, she's going to be able to go through a storm and bounce back. How many times have parents named their son, named their daughter, and now they look at their son or they look at their daughter and they don't see the name? A palm tree, upright, tall, stately, flourishing, a symbol of victory. This was who she was called to be, a symbol of victory. Listen, church, the enemy is out to steal your name. All the good that you are about, all the potential of your future, the devil will take joy in taking it away from you. Church, this is why one must control their emotions. You can see something and indeed it be beautiful, yet this will never give you permission to take that thing or that person. The verse, verse 1 it begins with the word and, and, and that and is an indicator that time has ticked on. Time has marched on. When he had the, had the baby, the first one, time has moved on. So you can't think it happened the next day. After he got up from morning and he washed himself, he anointed himself, he went to praise and worship, time moved on. But I tell you, I wish, I think some of you wish too, that with any negative seeds that we planted, we could just go to the house of God, anoint us out, worship, and it will wash every seed away. But I'm, I'm here to tell you that the seed still will take the taken root. And yes, time has ticked on, 
but the consequences of the ill deeds of David have not been forgotten. The seeds were planted, and David's seeds of sexual misconduct and sacred misconduct are about to be unleashed. I want you to note that verse 1 specifically identifies Absalom as the son of David. Absalom, the son of David, genetics are going to kick in. You are going to see exhibited some aspect of who his father is. That's next week. That's next week. But God mentions Absalom first, meaning Absalom, your David's son. All right, let's look at two. <laughs> and Amnon was so vexed <laughs> that he fell sick for his sister Tamar, for she was a virgin. And Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. He is vexed. He's vexed. Vexation. Vex comes from the Hebrew word, yesah. It means, listen to this. It's how he's feeling. It means to bind, be distressed, be in distress, be cramped, be narrow, be scanned, be in straits, make narrow, cause distress, besiege. All this going on with him. Church, none of the, none of the words I just mentioned suggest that Amnon is in love. I said he's vexed. I'm going to help, some, going to help somebody. No, each suggests that Amnon is in lust. He's in lust. Okay, all right. When men start saying, I can't live without you. Girl, if you go up and die, life is not worth living. You are in trouble. That's, that's not love. Help me hold this up. I can't live without you. If I don't have you, I'm going to die. You mean everything to me. It can't be a gap, eh? I'm going to help you out in a minute. Come hold this out of semen, please. We have to start teaching our girls the difference between these feelings. Because let me tell you what, what they're here today. He said he loved me. He said there's nobody like me who'd do anything for me. Hmm? The same thing. Come on now. My guys are paying attention. I'm, I'm going to whip them today. <laughs> because the next time they say to any female, girl, I love you. She, I better have matter. And it better be an engagement ring in about six months. Oh, the pressure's on. <laughs> They'll be like, I take no pictures of you today, Pastor. Not today. <laughs> But hear me, hear me, hear me. What we have here is a vexation of the soul. What did I say? A vexation of the soul. The, the soul realm is vexed. Uh, this is not love and will result in a possessiveness. Even stalking. Selfish. Yeah, stalking, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> he just talked to her five minutes ago. Hey, baby, <laughs> what you doing? She just told you she was cooking a meal. Meal take more than five minutes. Me in the kitchen? Mm. What time are you going to be finished? All right. I'll check in on you, OK? All right. Ten minutes left. Who you think it is? Me. <laughs> See? I have to deal with this because silly women, let me be her on the other side. <laughs> really? You're thinking about me? <laughs> yes, I was, I, was, <laughs> I was thinking about you too. You're going to call me again? <laughs> you, 
You like me that much? Oh, you, you don't have to call me. You don't have to call me. Hangs up, right? Call me, call me, call me. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> now, you know it. Like you don't know it's him. Like you don't know it's him. <laughs> I got I to teach this because I'm living in a la-la time. The millennials, oh, I feel, I feel, I feel. I'm vexed. I can't. Listen, this, this is not agape, and it's not even a healthy eros. It is more of a fearless love in which the body <laughs> needs to be satisfied in some way. I'm, it is fearless when it does not last past when you give in and have sex with them. <laughs> ah, I'm going to help some people out today. You know, you gave your virginity to them, and you ain't seen them since. Gave your most valuable gift. <laughs> Woo, yeah. Silence in the camp. <laughs> See, uh-oh, pastor going to break it down. See? Listen, listen. It's having sex and not being in love or making love. Come on now. Huh? Woo-hoo-sha. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it's not a gap when two months later, a year later, you cannot stand him, you cannot stand her. <laughs> How you been laying naked in the bed doing body part things and you can't like you can't stand each other now? Has never understood that. But we got a generation. All is about myself, myself. So I got to get myself satisfied. Huh? Single women. I see them grand, 50 and 60, making love every day on, on, on social media, taking selfish. I do mine on a Sunday with strategy. But no, all these, oh, that's me, some of my schoolmates. I say, look at them, desperate, because they ain't got a man. They got social, social media, Facebook. Oh, you, you ain't going to like me. I'm, I'm going to tell you where it's at. Korean, am I preaching that right? Yeah. Because, hey, listen up to your pastor now. And you know this is in my spirit for what I'm teaching on Vanistas. We have got to be able to discern the real thing from the counterfeit. Because the real thing draws you closer to God. The counterfeit thing draws you away from God. And so this story here, it's in the Bible because God's man who knew how to be in God's presence, who knew that God was his shepherd, got in his flesh, got in his eros. Come on, Oshie. The devil loves to confuse what love is so that he can confuse you out of the perfect will of God. <laughs> oh, I'm telling you, young people not married and, and young people who are no longer virgins because you get, I'm still talking to you, that the next time around, it got to be a gap. Aid. Come on, that's all I'm saying. I can't change what's done. You can't change what's done. But going forward, we're going to go for the agape. Okay, all right, all right, all right. And so listen, two and three, I'm going to read them together. And Amnon was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister. See, putting on the body. Feel us, the body, like a presence. Eros the erotic, I'm getting there. Yeah. And so he, he fell vexed. So first he had a, his body, he had to make his body sick because now of the vexation of the romance he thought he had for. Let me finish reading this. For... For she was a virgin, and Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. But, but Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shemir, David's brother. And Jonadab was a very subtle man. <laughs> the but in verse 3 tells you that all that was how check in verse 2. Because remember, 
Amnon said, I, I don't think, I, I find it hard. I can't do anything to her. But here comes, here comes Jonadab. Yeah, man. What you want? Yeah, you're the king's son. Uh-huh. And so everything that was held back in verse 2 is about to be unleashed in verse 3. Why? Because he had a friend who was going to support him in his madness. Every, listen, listen, listen. Huh? Every one of us have a friend that if you lost your mind, they will lose their mind with you and tell them, let's go. Every, including pastor, you got that particular friend. You know they ain't right. You know they ain't right. You entertain them, but they're foolishness. Uh -huh. You just go, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But, but here, Jonadab now will entice. <laughs> she said him. That's a Pentecostal daughter you got right there. Amnon will be enticed by Jonadab, who is subtle. Watch out for your subtle friend. Now, unfortunately, you're really not going to know who your subtle friend is because they're subtle. They're slick. You didn't even know it happened. All right. So, 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 all you need is one good friend to agree with your wrong, and you can very well carry out that wrong. And his name is Jonadab. Thank you, brethren. I think we've got that. Thank you, Alda, and thank you, Deacon. So, we've got Jonadab now, and all your heart needs, all your emotions. Every time I see a man, I feel a certain way. And Jonadab going, yeah, you're the, you're the king's son. You feel that's what, that's what you want? Man, you can take it, man. You can have it. <laughs> man, oh, you did the hookup, man. What? Slip a little Mickey. <laughs> take out Dondi Bob, put something in her drink. Man, you did. <laughs> huh? Hmm? Oh, she's she soft, man. Just call her. Call her straight every day for seven days, man. Off of that, you can take a McDonald's, and you know what's going to happen off of that. Mm -hmm. Sell out yourself cheap because of a subtle spirit. So Amnon, Amnon knows it's wrong, but his friend tells him it's all right. He, he, he knows that he should not, but he's given a way to have what he ought not. And so we've got to watch. Our heart, our friendships. Who do you give away your heart to? What is, is your friend there as a check to put you in place? Can you trust this friend who will tell you when you're wrong? Or do you always have to have the friend tell you you're right, even when you knew it was wrong before you got with the friend? All your heart wants is to have another person agree with you and give you, here it is, permission to think wrong and then to do wrong. All your heart wants to do is be fooled into thinking that it can be given permission to do evil and to be evil. Church, do you know how many men and how many women have made lifelong and consequential decisions because of feeling, because of a feeling of their heart? Hmm? And it turned out to be the wrong move? This is why you must place your wants and desires before God and see if they meet up with the standard of God. The standard of God, the, the love of God will never change while the love of him or her, uh, it, it, it couldn't change. Jonadab consents to the feelings of Amnon. And that takes us to point number two, the taking. The taking. They come up with a sinister plan for Amnon to have his way. Verse 5. And Jonadab said unto him, Lay, look, 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 lay thee down on the bed and make thyself sick. And when thy father cometh to see thee, because we've got to get his permission, you see, put him in. When thy father comes to see thee, say unto him, I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come and give me meat and dress the meat in my sight that I may see it and eat it at her hand. The plan is conceived. The deceit is indeed deceitful. Just as, just as David was deceitful in trying to get Uriah to sleep with his wife, 
to cover his own wrong, Jonadab is creating a scene of deception to get Amnon to sleep with Tamar. Tan and Amnon said unto Tamar, Bring the meat into the chamber that I may eat of thine hand. And Tamar took the cakes which she had made and brought them into the chamber to Amnon, her brother. The word that got my attention was chamber. Chamber. Huh? Where, where are we going with the word chamber? A chamber is described as a private room. <laughs> See, back in the day, oh, we got a hard time today. Ba back in the day, the boy coming to see the girl. You, you by the time he, they, by the time they dated six months, he knew what every tile looked like. He knew what the floor looked like. He knew where all the dishes, because that's as far as he could go. Yeah, right. The kitchen and the living room. Yeah, right. He ain't getting into her private. Yeah. What private? She ain't getting paid rent. What? 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 That door shouldn't even have a lock on it. Yeah. Hmm? <laughs> but look at it here. It's a private room, especially a bedroom. Chamber comes from the word chada, meaning room, parlor, innermost or inward part within. So he's going now to create a scene in the inward part, all right. The only way, hear me, the enemy can get at you is to bring you into his inner chamber, bring you into the place where he feels safe and in control. He always, if I don't meet him, he ain't getting my approval. Yeah, he be out taking one of my daughters, the though all, all, all in love, Making all sorts of plans, and I'm, I ain't even approved them. Ha! <laughs> Failure. Bound to fail. Mm hmm. Yeah. Mm hmm. You're all in your emotions. Your eros and your. Uh, <laughs> eros goes out the door after I do. I'm going to help you out right here. Hold on. Hold on. I'll help you out. Ha <laughs> ha! Woo! Shabba. Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah. You have to be careful when others take you into the inner chambers of their heart and mind. That's where they take your identity, your uniqueness, and your destiny away from you. You used to like so-and-so, but now that you're hanging in somebody else's inner chamber, you can't stand so-and-so. Now you feel a sort of way about somebody. Somebody got your mind. Whatever you do, do not enter into the inner chamber of one who is operating out of the will of God. Ask God for discernment so that you will have the inside tract of knowing who is worthy. Tamar trusted Amnon, for Amnon was her brother, half-brother, half-brother. And in this day, your brother was to be your protector, the protector of who you were. Your life, look at what it's supposed to be protecting. Look, your life, your virginity, and your future. All were entrusted to your older brother. And so this act of violence is a complete betrayal of truth. Just as Uriah trusted David, follow me now, don't, don't miss it. Just as Uriah trusted David completely and was destroyed, Tamar trusts Amnon completely and is about to be destroyed. This is the open shame, the taking. This dastardly deed of David <laughs> did a boomerang on his own precious daughter. See? See? She now becomes, watch this now, this blew me away. She, Tamar, Tamar becomes the ewe lamb. Oh, yes. Yeah. That's right. could have had any woman in the kingdom. Yes. It's the king's son. As a matter of fact, Tamar even tells him, look, go to my daddy, go to our father, and he will not withhold me from you. Let him give the approval of this thing that you want to do. Amnon could have had anybody, but he goes after.
after the ewe lamb. He goes after Tamar. He goes after the palm tree. He goes after victory. That's why when a woman is raped, she experiences no victory. Oh, I'm going to help, help you. I'm going to help you here watching it. Though. Surely Amnon could have had any woman, but he goes after the very one he should have left to learn. The seeds planted by David are reaping forth the harvest. Hmm. Point number three. Must be my longest, so I got here real fast. Point number three. The torture. The torture. The story is in full force now of torture, full of torture. 11 through 14, listen to it. And when she had brought them into him to eat, he took hold of her and said unto her, Come, lie with me, my sister. And she answered him, Nay, my brother, do not force me, for no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Do not thou this folly. And I, whither shall I cause my shame to go? And as for thee, thou shalt be as one of the fools in Israel. Now therefore I pray thee, look, Speak unto the king. Now, Pastor, I want to teach you something. She did not say, speak unto my father. She said, speak unto the one that has full authority over the kingdom. And so she's speaking to him, not even out of the relational, but the authority point. All right? I, I, I pray thee, speak unto the king, for he will not withhold me from thee. Howbeit, he would not hearken unto her voice, but being stronger than she, forced her and lay with her. The first torture is the fact that he took her. He took hold of her. He took her. Recall, ladies and gentlemen, that David took Bathsheba. Cycle. See it? Be now reaped. He sowed a seed of taking a woman, and now his son is about to take his daughter, the ewe lamb. Hmm? This taking had to be, good Lord, jeez, I'm helping somebody. This taking had to be painful. For one who was not in agreement, she said no. And for another fact, she was a virgin. Yeah, right. yeah. oh, I could go ahead and this. This, this, is, mm -hmm. this ain't no making love. I'm trying to tell somebody. This is a taking. This is violent. Come on, all say, I want, I want that the young people in Bermuda begin to understand how beautiful love can be. Huh? When, when love is beautiful and it's felt between a man and a woman, then that first night, it, it's not going to be painful because of the love. That's right. That's right. I can't go too deep into it, but, I, yeah. but what we're teaching and allowing our young people just to do it, just to do, 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 to do what? What is your it? That's right. Can't be making love. Mama. Okay, listen. And so a violent, she's a virgin. Somebody in here has experienced that you were a virgin. And it was violent. She was a virgin, and so a violent taking would result in a violent first experience. Tamar is the Bible's visual of the Me Too movement. Hmm? Hmm? Uh, she was taken without permission. She didn't get permission, and her father, huh, her king, did not give permission. To make matters worse, <laughs> the torture becomes worse. Well, what could be worse? Okay. Verse 15. Then Amnon, see, 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 that's why I told you it's not a gap eight. Well, <laughs> All the body parts contorted, doing all sorts of things. You think that was love? 15. Then Amnon hated, hated her exceedingly. 
so that the hatred, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I wish I would a pearl in this place. How many men, the first one you're with, the one that you know you shouldn't have been with, you can't stand her guts now. I'm looking at cameras. <laughs> then Amnon hated her exceedingly, so that the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. I love you so much, I'm going to rape you. Wow. And Amnon said unto her, Libba, arise, be gone. Get cracking. Hit it and quit it. What? This ain't no love. What are you all talking about? How could love turn around and become hate so fast? Good Lord. First of all, if we're making love, so that means that if it was violent, it was quick. So as quick as it happened, it's as quick as he went from love to hate. See, oh, we think the Bible's not up to date. This is not God's agape love that really needs, watch this, this is going to hurt something up you right here. I better start this sentence again. This is not God's agape love that really needs no sexual encounter to be real. If I interviewed married couples been married 40 years plus, I would have to do the 40 years plus, 35 years, 34 to include me. No, 35, so you can be pokey, about me. <laughs> they are going to tell you, There have been times during this marriage I couldn't stand him. There were times I thought with the next trash delivery, I wanted to put him out there with the trash. There were times when I looked in the mirror and I said, you lost your mind staying with this man. But let me tell you why. They are still together. <laughs> Because it wasn't Philos. It wasn't Eros. It was God's agape love. And that's when love covers a multitude of sins. I'm going to help some of you out. I can't get into the teaching. That's Wednesday night. Huh? I'm going to go deeper on Wednesday nights. <laughs> My mama's laughing. She's thinking about 50,000 examples. That's what she's thinking of. Father Russell, he did the 50,000 exam. <laughs> Heard they've been married 57 years this year. Kind of nonsense. You think because they've all been in love and cutie? Yeah. He may tell Sherry J, play it, girl, play it for me, my song. Because I only have eyes. Uh huh. There have been times when there's eyes. <laughs> what, what my daddy says, I'm outing them. My auntie told me not to marry no yellow-skinned woman. <laughs> Yet here is, here's what pastor's going to be teaching, that when you love somebody at agape, it makes the error sweeter. It makes their fe the feel of sweeter. You can just be in their presence, and you just made love. See, ah, you ain't ready for that. I ain't going into that. Let me get back to the stuff. I know, I know, I know. Anyway, let me teach this. You all think I don't know. <laughs> so look, look, look. Let me get back serious on this here. Serious, going to teach my young people something. Church, while we hardly value virginity these days, back in this day, the virginity of a girl or young woman was a value that you could not pay for. I'm telling you, I'm, kings would give their virgin daughters to be wed to the children of other kings or persons of royalty. Let me tell you something. Um, Queen Mother, what's her name? Queen Elizabeth, what's his name? King. Elizabeth and Philip weren't all in love. 
They were kingdom organized in love. <laughs> Strategic alliances between kingdoms. Well, half all these years they're in love nine, everybody else dead. I know where I get these things from. God save the queen. Amen. <laughs> get myself out of trouble right now. They'd be shipping me the next time. They'd be shipping me somewhere. All right. Amen. Amen. I watched their life documentary, and I watched a lot of documentaries back in the 1400s and whatnot. Kings. Look, let me just, let me see if I have this written. I don't know. But, oh, yeah, I do. Listen to this. These marriages on the marriage night. You ain't ready for this. On the ma- <laughs> Y'all right. Y'all right. Y'all right. Y'all what? Yeah. Let me finish this sentence. Let me finish this sentence. On the marriage night, there had to be proof or validation that she was actually a virgin or the wedding would be considered null and void. Yeah. I, I, I should go, I should say it, because some of you have seen it. Yes. The marriage bed's hair yeah, right. has a curtain around her, and all, the, and a, all these advisors and people waiting. Yeah. They want that sheet. Pass me the sheet. Where's the blood? Yes, yes, right. We see the blood, we'll pass over you. You're OK. <laughs> we, don't, we don't see no blood. You're probably getting your hair chopped off. You didn't see blood then. Yeah. Yeah. Right. See, your. Oh, well, we're going slack today. Here, take her, take her, take her. Take me, take me, take me. Oh, yo. I'm trying to show you. She was a king's daughter. She was a king's daughter who had prominence, palm tree, who was supposed to experience victory, who was supposed to be a choice for some other royalty. So this was a value placed on the body of a single woman. So whereas Tamar was a virgin, a virgin daughter of a king, and was surely set for greatness as far as her future, this selfish and raging act of rape not only raped her of her virginity, her present state, but also raped her of her prospects as a bride, her future state. Shamano, spoiled. Rotten, used. For this reason, 16 through 19, listen. And she said unto him, There is no cause this evil in sending me away. It is greater than the other that thou didst unto me. But he would not hearken unto her. Then he called his servant that ministered unto him and said, Look, put now this woman out from me. Oh, she's a woman now. Hmm. This woman. (laughs) And and bolt the door after her. And she had a garment of diverse colors upon her, for with such robes were the king's daughters that were virgins apparelled. Then his servant brought her out and bolted the door after her. Then Tamar put ashes on her head and rent her garment of diverse colors that was on her and laid her hand on her head and went on crying. Hmm? Me too, right here. How can you move from love to I can't stand to even look at you? She has moved from being called fair or beautiful to being called this woman. You know, now I can't stand her. All she wants is my money. Like, what kind of money he got? This is what we do, but we've got to start saying again, standards. It's all right enough for you to have sex with every man that tells you he loves you. It's all right to keep yourself from now until. Hmm? She has moved now to being this woman in one foul act of rage disguised as love. She moves from a place of value to a place of no value. He orders the door to be bolted. Bolt the door. <laughs> don't just close it. You know, I mean, don't just close it. I, I want you to hear it. Don't just close it. Psalms 
sound of rejection, sound of demoralization, sound of you'll never be the same, sound of every hope and, and dream you had. You had thought about your best girlfriends and who would stand with you, but now, how, how can you stand in people's company? She'll never be the same. The word bolt comes from the word neal, means to bar, lock, shut up. Mm, that's what they want you to do, isn't it? Shut up afterwards, isn't it? Don't say nothing, shh. Don't tell, shh. If you tell, it'll be worse. But it plays in her mind. It is not her reality. She can never marry another prince, marry somebody's son, and experience being accepted by that family. Hmm? She ain't slapped around, she just was raped. She is not only physically barred from him, she is also barred from having a good future. Her value has been devastated, and this is what rape does. Rape in the church, rape out of the church. See, I'm going to deal with it. The reason that sometimes there, well, the reason that there's a lot of mistrust is because this has happened even in the house of God, in the place where you should have been protected. Hmm? She, had, she had a multicolored robe representing the beauty of it. This, this robe identified that she was no ordinary girl. She was royal. She could fetch the highest price. She hopefully will get married and have sons and continue the legacy of another king and kingdom. But what happens when your kingdom is rent? Huh? What happens when your hopes and dreams are torn asunder? What happens when what you wear now doesn't fit you? It no longer identifies who you are. You can't wear a lie. You can't say, no, no, just, just stitch it up. I'll be okay. You can't unstitch a rape. Come on, I'll say. You can't unstitch it. Unrip it. Something else is going on. Okay, all right, all right, all right. She then takes her robe, representing virginity, rips it, because she, hear me, has been ripped. Oh, you poor, come on now. I said she was a virgin. She was violently taken. I said she was ripped. Ripped in two. She has been torn. She will never be the same. Deacon and elder. She began clean slate. Clean virgin. What a clean virgin. Innocent. Anything's possible. She never even knew probably of the seed that her daddy had sown. All she was doing was serving her brother, and yet he took her in the inner chamber. All she was was saying, well, now that you've done this thing, let's try to make it right, but instead, he bolted the door. That's what rape does. Who she looked like at the beginning is nothing with what she looks like now. Stay there a minute. Stay, 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 stay. What we like to do, <laughs> we like to say, well, you know what? We, 
She'll be all right. She'll be all right. We'll, we'll just put it back to, put it back together again. She'll be okay. I mean, it looks pretty much the same, doesn't it? Turn it over, brethren. We don't see the scars of the rape. We don't understand the lingering. Huh? Why, why she'll never have another man? Why she won't have children? Can I bring it up today? Why you will never trust a man fully? Well, even today, you could be 50, 60, 70, and 80, and you still remember the day that so-and-so took something without permission. We have a lot of children today, a lot of young adults, a lot of adults who are scarred. They'll never tell you the story, but it happened. And it happened in this family, David's family, in the Old Testament. <laughs> Because there is the law that if you sowed it, it's coming back more in multiple numbers. Oh, you think you put it together? Now she's still scarred. Now she's scarred for life. I pray forgiveness for every person that's ever raped somebody. Because some of us have to deal with the consequences of the rape. Doctors and psychologists and the rest of it. Why? Somebody got raped. Some pedophile touched that little girl. You wanted her to understand it? How she, how she gonna understand it? And she's broken today. She may wear it well, but the scars are there. Mm. Verse 20, my last verse. And Absalom, her brother, said unto her, Hath Amnon, thy brother, been with thee? See, 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 now how would he know that? Her continence has changed. She's not wearing the, the, the multi where's, where's your identity? Where's your identity? It's been taken away from you. Hath Amnon, thy brother, been with thee? So he must have known something. Wait a minute, you're in his house protected, but you're not wearing. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, now listen to him. Next week's going to be interesting. Listen to him this week. Listen to him this week in verse 20. Uh, he says, um, but hold now thy peace, my sister. He is thy brother. Regard not this thing. <laughs> Some of you go read ahead. <laughs> so Tamar remained desolate, remained desolate in her brother Absalom's house. So Absalom, listen to what his name means. His name means my father is peace or peaceful. So he brings peace to the situation for her, for now. But, but that's why, you know, because he needs to focus on her. She's wounded. She's hurt. She's rejected. She feels just demolished and devastated in every way. He takes care of her. Let me bring you peace in this situation. And then he, he takes her into his house. Let me read. So while he provides a bit of peace for his forever tormented sister, did you hear me? His forever tormented sister, she will be covered by Absalom. Desolate, no, though desolate. What does this desolate mean? Comes from the Hebrew word shemen. By the way, it's about S H A M E N. She feels shame. I didn't know that when I chose the topic, you know. Open shame. Open shame. And it means be appalled, stunned, be deflowered, to be deserted. I expect, I always start from where I am, you know. Every male, I've got little boys, I've got a young man. From this moment on, you will understand the sanctity of, of, of God relationships, of your body, and of having the right type of standards. Amen. Never say you weren't taught. So this, this girl, listen, she will never know true love, a shame. She will never have children, a shame. Makes you think of the fact, watch this that Uriah would never have children. Everything now is coming back at David that he did unto Uriah. Everything.
everything. I mean, I finished it. Director. Oh, the consequence of seeds planted. The consequence. Bermuda. <laughs> we have a hurting generation. I see beyond the fight, you know. I, I see beyond the fight, ladies and gentlemen. I see young adults. They don't know why they do what they do. Why she, as damp as it was last night, got on like a hole to top. Somebody, she, she wrong for that. She wrong. But she's hurting. That's what I think. I said, what are they missing? Who has cut at their life? Who has severed parts of, where's the mama? Where's the daddy? Were they protected? Were they covered? And church, this is where we have to now find ourselves, that we become, in this essence, an Absalom. Bring peace, shalom. Bring peace. You know, I'm not going to be so harsh that they're not going to understand that Pastor Seaman loves them. Oh, I pray that when this is on Swim TV, I hope, I, Lord, let one of them look at this. Look at it all the way through. And then we can start to call them. Come on in here. We're going to teach you about agape love. We're going to teach you about the value of your body. We're going to teach you how great you are in the kingdom. And young man, young man, look, look, the young man, just standing around watching them fight. No, no, we're going to teach young man. No, you protect the women. And if they ever get at it, you, 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 you pull them apart, 